What's up, YouTube? I'm back at you with another video. And in this video, I'm going to give my preview and prediction of the Citrus Bowl matchup between the Tennessee Vols versus the Iowa Hawkeyes. Uh, this is an interesting matchup to me. Um, got a team in Iowa, uh, really, really good on defense, um, but uh, don't have a, a good offense. And um, got a team in Tennessee, uh, really, really good offense. Um, had a decent defense this season. But uh, had some guys sitting out, and I'm gonna get into that in, later in the video. But uh, uh, the most important thing is uh, Nico. Uh, I don't want to butcher his last name. Uh, he's getting the start for Tennessee. Um, very, very talented guy coming out of high school. Uh, I know a lot of Vol fans are very, very excited to see him get his start, and uh, it's really gonna be his era of college football. So, uh, a very, very talented guy. No. I'm going to just get right into it and reading off the stats. Uh, we'll start with Tennessee. Like I said, Nico, uh, he only has 26 attempts, uh, 16 completions for 163 yards on the season. Uh, he only has one touchdown. But uh, like I said, a uh, very, very talented young man. Uh, he oozes, you know, confidence, you know. Uh, Watch this interview. It seems like he, he's ready to uh, take the helm you know, or Josh Heupel's offense. Um, ever since Josh Heupel has been there, uh, he's done a phenomenal job with Tennessee. Uh, this Tennessee team uh, has gotten back, you know, to the point where, you know, they can compete with teams and stuff like that. Um, I still can't get over, you know, the hump of winning, you know, the conference, but uh, he has that team going in a good direction, in my opinion. Uh, that defense has greatly improved from – uh, the previous seasons, man, um, Tennessee was just known for having pretty good offense. But uh, this season, man, they had a really, really good defense, in my opinion. But, uh, yeah, he definitely has them going in the right direction. Like I said, Nico, um, I think he's going to give Tennessee's offense, you know, uh, an even better look. Now, I'm going to read off some of the uh, opt-outs. Of course, like I said, Nico's going to start because uh, – uh, Joe Milton has opted out, as well as Jalen Wright and Jabari Small. Uh, very, very key pieces to that Tennessee offense. You know, all of those are starting guys for the team. But uh, he's going to have somebody that he can lean on, and uh, a very, very good guy to lean on, and Dylan Sampson. Uh, Dylan Sampson, uh, he's just as good, in my opinion, as, as he was definitely in that rotation of those running backs. Um so far, he has 86 carries with 471 yards. Uh, you want to compare that, Jabari Small had 95 carries with 475. So, uh, Jabari Small only has four yards more than, you know, Dylan Sampson. Definitely a guy that they're going to use, man. And um, uh, he's no slouch. Actually, average-wise, he's right behind Jalen Wright, you know, as far as average. Uh, Jabari Small is averaging 5.0 yards a rush. Dylan Sampson is getting 5.5, so almost six. Um, and also, he has the most touchdowns on the team as far as, you know, at the running back position. Uh, it, it was between him and Joe Milton. They both had seven uh, touchdowns apiece. So uh, definitely going to be using this matchup. He's definitely going to be the guy. And um, I think his offense is still going to be uh, really, really good. Um, wide receiver, I haven't heard anything about it. Uh, Squirrel Wright or anybody like that opting out, I could be wrong, but they still have Squirrel Wright. He's the leading receiver with 764 yards receiving with two touchdowns. Uh, Ramel Keaton, uh, he has six touchdowns with 591 yards receiving. Uh, they still got McKellen Castit Castles, tight end, 265. So they definitely have the guys that uh, step up. Uh, I'm not sure about Dunton Thornton Jr., the transfer from Oregon. A uh, burner. Uh, really, really good wide receiver. Uh, if he's up and going, man, uh, this offense can really, really uh, take off, especially with Nico at the helm. Uh, it's going to be tough going against this Iowa defense, though. Iowa's really, really good defensively. Uh, they rank real, real high in a lot of defensive categories, and I'm going to read that off uh, later on. But uh, really, really good team that they're going against. But uh, if you're a Vols fan, you got to like your chances going in this matchup. Um, switch over to the Iowa team. As far as I know, Iowa uh, doesn't have any opt-outs. 
if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I think I'm, I think I'm sure on that. I think I think they don't have any opt outs. Uh, quarterback, they have Deacon Hill. Um, he has um, 233 attempts and 115 completions for 1,096 yards passing. Uh, his completion percentage, though, is at 49.4. That's very, very poor. Um, like I said, Iowa doesn't have the great greatest offense, but uh, he has thrown for over 1,000 yards. Like I said, at this point in time, you know, most quarterbacks are even during that, you know, close to that 3,000 mark as far as passing. So um, they definitely have some issues going on offensively. Uh, he's only thrown for five touchdowns, and they have six interceptions. So uh, very, very poor, you know, offense. And they also got Cade McNamara, you know, from uh, Michigan. You know, he transferred from Michigan to over to Iowa. Uh, he only has 505 yards passing, and uh, he has four touchdowns with three interceptions. So uh, they're not really good offensively, you know. Uh, Rushing-wise, they have LaShawn Williams. He has 164 carries for 804 yards rushing, one touchdown. Um, have Caleb Johnson. He has three touchdowns with 429 rushing. Uh, they also have Jay-Z and Patterson. He has 199 yards two touchdowns, and they have Kamari Moulton, who has two touchdowns for 93 yards. So uh, those are their guys at the running back position. Receiving-wise, Eric All, he's their leading receiver with 299 yards rushing with three touchdowns. Um, Addison Estringa, he's a tight end. Uh, he only has two touchdowns with 179, well, 178 yards receiving. And Nico Regani. He has 252 yards receiving, no touchdowns. So, like I said, man, uh, those stats do not jump out at you. They only have 11 rushing touchdowns and nine receiving touchdowns on the season. Um, offensively, I was uh, not really, really good. I keep saying that, but they're very, very good defensively, and that's where uh, they have a chance, you know, uh, trying make making it a game, not being blowed out. Um, a lot of guys, Jay Higgins, that linebacker, he's their leading tackler, 155 yards, uh, 100, not yards, 155 total tackles, uh, one sack, um, three passes defended, one interception. Total, this team, sack-wise, they have uh, 27 sacks. Just a really, really great fundamental defensive team, man. Um, I was definitely a team that you don't, um, see too many, you know, miss, you know, uh, assignments, you know, really, really good team. Sebastian Castro on the back end, he has three interceptions on the season. Just a very, very disciplined defensive team, man. And uh, they've given everybody problems defensively all season. And, um, and just to, you know, piggyback back on uh, Tennessee's side defensively, Tennessee is no slouch, you know, defensively, you know. Uh, they probably didn't perform the way they wanted later on in the season, but Tennessee has 36 total sacks, so a uh, much larger sack, you know, rate than uh, Iowa. Um, it's going to be interesting, you know. In my opinion, Tennessee has a great offense and uh, defense. They, they, their offense wasn't as uh, explosive as it was last season, but I think them bringing in uh, Nico, even though this is going to be his first start, you know, as a, you know, leading the game. He, he's had some playing time this season, but uh, this is going to be big time for him starting. And uh, it's going to be interesting. But uh, really, really good matchup between these two. I thought it was interesting. I'm going to read off some stats, you know, some uh, other things about this game that I think is going to be uh, key. Now, like I said, this is going to be the Citrus Bowl. It's the cheez -It Bowl. Uh, it's going to be played tomorrow. You know, I believe in the, the p.m., I think, I think right at either 11 or 12 o'clock or something like that in my time. So uh, it's going to be interesting. Now, read off these stats. Iowa is really, really hard to score on, like I said. Iowa ranks number four in scoring defense with 13.2 uh, points per game. They're number five in total defense, only allowing 274.8 yards per game. They're number eight in passing defense with 172.2 yards per game. 
and they're number 13 in rushing defense with 102 yards, 0.5 uh, yards on the ground rushing that they're allowing to opponents. So um, it's really, really good defense all the way around. And um, that's what's making this uh, this game interesting to me. You know, can Tennessee move the ball on Iowa? That's that's going to be the, uh, the key for the uh, Vols to win this matchup. Um now the Hawkeyes lost 31 to 10 to Penn State and 26 to uh, zero to Michigan. So they didn't score any points in either one of those games against you know Penn State and Michigan. Um, they didn't allow more than 22 points in, in any other game this season. Their other loss was a 12 to 10 loss to Minnesota. So really, really good team uh, defensively. Um, they rarely give up big plays. Uh, Iowa only. Uh, they only allowed one rush of 20 yards or more this season, and that's the fewest in college football. So uh, very, very, very good defense. Uh, it's going to be interesting, though, to see what uh, Tennessee Vols can do. Um, like I said, uh, Tennessee is going to be bringing in Nico, uh, ultra-talented five-star uh, recruit. Um, like I said, though, he's inexperienced. Uh, it's going to be interesting, though. Um, he's played – only 52 snaps in four games and uh, mop-up duty this season. So um, he has dipped his foot in the water a little bit, but uh, this is going to be a game where he's going to have to uh, – a really, really huge test for him to step up. But uh, he got to be patient, you know, and, um, you know, it's, it's, his, it's his team now, in my opinion. So uh, definitely going to have to, you know, step up in his matchup. Like I said, Iowa – uh, offensively, man, might be one of the worst offenses in college football. Uh, so bad to the point that, in my opinion, I could see Tennessee potentially only having to score like maybe 20 points to win this matchup. You know, uh, I don't think it's going to take much for Tennessee to win uh, if they want to win this matchup. Uh, defensively, Iowa, they can take advantage of some, you know, turnovers. Maybe they can win, you know, this matchup. But uh, Iowa. Uh, it ranks among 133 FBS teams in total offense with 238 yards per game. Like I said, real, really poor. And they're number 130 in scoring offense with 16.6 per game. Um, like I said, man, uh, they're going to have to put something together. You know, uh, maybe they can find something, but it's going to be interesting to see. Um, now, defensively, I forgot to mention this for Tennessee. Defensive end Tyler Barron and five defensive backs in the primary uh, rotation entered the transfer portal. So um, how good Tennessee's defense going to be? You know, uh, they're going to have to rely on, I think, Ricky Gibson and safety Andrew, 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 Andre Tarantine. Uh, they're going to be new starters in the secondary. So uh, they'll get their playing time on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, like I said, as far as Iowa, I don't know if they have any opt-outs. I don't think they suffered any major losses in the transfer portal as well. But um, Cooper DeJean and um, Bronco, uh, not Bronco, Cooper DeJean, a finalist for the Jim Thorpe Award, and Bronco Nagurski Award suffered a season-ending uh, leg injury in November. So uh, other than that, I think Iowa's going to be at full strength. Um if I had to get my prediction for this game, I'm going to go back up. Uh, the game, like I said, it's going to be played at the Citrus Bowl. Um, I'm not mistaken, I think that's in Orlando, Florida. I could be wrong about that. Um, the current line right now is five and a half points for Tennessee. Um, if I had to get my prediction for this game, man. Um, oh, right before I do that, let me give off the last five opponents. Iowa beat uh, New Western uh, Ten to seven. Uh, they beat Rutgers twenty-two to zero. Uh, zero. Uh, they beat Illinois fifteen to thirteen. Uh, beat Nebraska thirteen to ten. Like I said, took that loss to Michigan in uh, the the uh, Big Ten championship game twenty-six to zero. So those are the last five games for Iowa. Last five for Tennessee. Uh, Tennessee went on the road to Kentucky, beat them thirty-three to twenty-seven. Uh, Tennessee beat UConn 59-3. Uh, went to Missouri, took a loss to Missouri 36-7. Just 
Um, Joe Milton just couldn't get it done in that matchup. Uh, then they played, they hosted Georgia at home, lost 38 to 10. Then they finished off the regular season beating their uh, in-state rival Vanderbilt 48 to 24. So um, those are the last five opponents. Like I said, the line's five and a half. If I had to give my prediction for this uh, matchup, I'm picking Tennessee. I think Tennessee uh, doesn't have to score a lot, like I mentioned earlier. I think they can get some points on the board. And um, like I said, Iowa, man, just offensively, they, they, it's hard for them to put up points, man. Um, I don't know what's going on with Iowa, man. They, they have one, like I said, 130th in total offense, man. That's really, really bad uh, at the bottom of the barrel. Uh, just can't put drives together, man. I, I don't know what it is with them. Uh, but always had a great defense. You know, I think it's going to be tough at first uh, for Tennessee to score. But I think Tennessee eventually uh, put some points on the board. I see Tennessee holding Iowa, you know, keeping them from scoring as well. Um, I just like Tennessee offensively, man. Uh, Josh Hype was really, really good. Anybody can get it done uh, to go against a really, really good defense like Iowa. Uh, Josh Hype can do that, man. Um, he's really, really good at utilizing players and taking advantage of, uh, you know, mismatches and stuff like that. It's going to be tough going against this Iowa defense, but uh, I just like Tennessee's offense, and plus their defense is no slots as well. So I'm picking Tennessee to win this matchup. Uh, what do you guys think? You know, leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section. And once again, if you haven't, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel, and I'll definitely be back with another video. Thanks, guys, and roll tide.